Hi everyone, Thomas back again, and welcome back to Bintel's What's in the Sky for September 2025. This month has something special in store, a rare total lunar eclipse, plus Saturn at its brightest, and some of the most stunning deep sky objects of the year. So let's dive in. The biggest news this month is the total lunar eclipse, also known as a blood moon. On the morning of 8 September, the moon will pass through Earth's shadow to turn that gorgeous deep red colour. This is visible across all of Australia and partly from New Zealand. If you're in Sydney, here's what to expect. Partial eclipse starts at 2.27am, total eclipse begins at 3.30am, maximum eclipse at 4.11am, total eclipse ends at 4.52am, and by 5.56am, it's all over. These times will differ slightly depending on where you are in Australia, so check out our blog in the description below to see the timings for other cities in Australia. The maximum eclipse is the highlight. That's when the moon glows deep orange red, so if you only catch part of it, make sure it's then. We've also got the regular lunar phases this month, full moon in September the 8th, third quarter on the 14th, new moon on the 22nd, and first quarter on the 29th. That new moon week will be your best chance to hunt faint galaxies and nebulae without moonlight washing them out. September keeps most of the planets close to the sun, so the night sky isn't quite as crowded as some months. Jupiter makes a very short appearance in the northeast before dawn, but is quickly lost in the glare of daylight. Mars sits low in the west and will likely be blocked by rooftops or trees. Mercury and Venus are even more elusive, staying tucked too close to the sun to be seen safely. That still leaves us with three planets well worth tracking down, Saturn, Neptune and Uranus. The real planetary headline for September is Saturn's opposition on the night of September 21st. Opposition is when a planet sits directly opposite the sun in our sky, meaning Earth is lined up between the two. At this point, Saturn rises in the east as the sun sets, stays visible all night and appears at its largest and brightest for the year. With no sunlight glare to contend with and the planet high overhead in the middle of the night, opposition is hands down the best time to view it. For best views, start watching from around 8pm as Saturn rises in the east, with prime observing window from 10pm to 1am. A medium or large telescope will show the planet's pale yellow globe, its thin rings and maybe in some of its brightest moons. Next up we have Neptune. Neptune lingers close to the Saturn in the sky, but is a little closer to the horizon. It's far too distant to show much detail, just a tiny bluish disk. Yet the thrill here is knowing you're looking at the most distant planet in our solar system, nearly four and a half billion kilometers away. It's visible from the same time as Saturn around 8 p.m., but is best observed from 10 p.m. to 11.30 p.m., when it's higher above the horizon. If you're using a telescope, a high power eyepiece will help distinguish this disk from surrounding stars. Finally, Uranus. Uranus is a different kind of observing challenge. It sits higher in the north and is best known as the first planet discovered with the help of a telescope in 1781. It's also tipped completely on its side given extreme seasonal changes. Early in September, Uranus rises around 2am with the clearest views between 3am and 4.30am. Later in the month it rises earlier each night, so by the last week of September you can start viewing it from about 1am with prime time from 2.30am to 4am. At high magnification, look for its distinctive pale blue green colour. Now that we've covered the planets, it's time to dive into some deep sky treasures. With fewer planets dominating the night, September gives us a perfect chance to explore some of the Milky Way's gems. Just watch out for the moon. Its glow can wash out fainter objects, so aim for the darker nights. The small Sagittarius star cloud M24 is first. This isn't a single cluster, but a sprawling cloud of stars in the Sagittarius arm of the Milky Way. It's full of stars of different magnitudes and colours, like tiny jewels across the sky. Within it you'll find open cluster NGC 6603, and if you look carefully, dark nebulae Barnard 92 and 93. Keep in mind, September is the last month to see the Milky Way fully overhead. M24 is visible all month after 6.30pm. Best between 7pm and 8pm from the 7th to the 14th. 
Next is the Eagle Nebula, M16, home of the famous Pillars of Creation. Even small telescopes can capture these stunning columns of glass. And below them is an open cluster filled with young, hot stars, including HD 168076, the brightest in the area. The Eagle Nebula is best seen between 7pm and 8pm in the second week of September, high in the northern sky. Nearby is the Omega Nebula, M17, also called as the Swan Nebula. This giant star forming region hosts some of the youngest star clusters. Often hidden in glowing gas, M17 has been observed for centuries and it's a relatively easy to spot visually. Like the Eagle, aim for 7 to 8 pm between the 7th and the 14th, high in the north. Then we have the Ring Nebula, M57, the most famous planetary nebula. Its glowing ring comes from a dying star shedding its outer layers. Telescopes larger than 6 inches show its iconic shape clearly. M57 sits low in the constellation Lyra, so you'll need a clear northern horizon. The best time to view it or photograph it is around 7pm mid-month, ideally when the moon isn't in the sky. If you're looking through the eyepiece, our number one pick for visual observers this month is the small Sagittarius star cloud. But the Omega Nebula and the Ring Nebula are both great targets as well. For smart telescope users, nothing beats live stack in the pillars of creation in the Eagle Nebula. And the Omega Nebula is again a great bright target. And finally, for our astrophotographers, you'll be able to get even more detail of the pillars in the Eagle than smart telescope users will. And if you have a long focal length setup, the Ring Nebula is an incredible object to photograph. And if you've worked your way through this month's targets, you've already seen some of the best September has to offer. But if you need a little more, check out our blog below where we mentioned some targets that we haven't mentioned yet, like the tight packed globular to M22, M11, the wild duck cluster, and the star cluster NGC 6541. And that is all for today, folks. So thank you very much for watching and we'll see you next month.